So are you planning to have a brand photo shoot anytime soon? Maybe you are creating your new website, or maybe you just joined a new marketplace, or maybe you just want to improve the quality of your Instagram feed. Well, tonight's episode you will absolutely love. Let's get right into it. <laughs> Good evening and welcome to this week's episode of The Lipstick Effect. I am Jamila Bannister, your host of this show, and I am very excited about tonight's topic. Yes, we will be speaking all about designing um, sh photo shoots for your beauty products. And of course, these principles could be applied to almost any product, but we will be focusing on beauty. So I'm very excited to be back here this week. And I look forward to engaging and interacting, right? So let's dive straight in. So you guys know I normally start off with news from around the world, but tonight there will be no news from around the world because we have so many things to discuss, so many things to discuss. So just to jump off from where we were last week, last week we met with Chanel Bethel-Peters, also known as Nelly B, who was an influencer and content creator. And we really um, had a good time talking about how you should be going about engaging with content creators if you would like to leverage them in your marketing efforts and how you can align your brand values with the values of, um, of a content creator or, or, a, or an influencer. All right. So this week we have yet another exciting topic with another exciting guest. I know you're looking forward to seeing Juma, but right now he's backstage, right? So before we get um, the interview started with Juma. Let's take a look. And of course, you know, guys, I love to show you Personality Magazine. And in this week's episode, I'm going to talk to you about the fashion issue, which is all about styling and looking good. So let's dive into it. Let me show, let me uh, share my screen here on personality. And as usual, of course, I love to show you the issue. So this is our issue from, I believe, from March of 2021. And this is one of, one of our favorite issues on the cover. Local designer, local to Trinidad and Tobago, that is James uh, Hackett. And James is, he's local to here, but of course he's an international designer. His designs have appeared on runways in New York Fashion Week and on, on different parts of the world. And I really want to encourage you to check out this issue because... Quite apart from James's amazing article where he talks about fashion and styling, we have some amazing articles in here as well on why every woman needs a piece of lingerie, right? And also, but the article I really want to focus on is this one. Six quick color tips to improve your wardrobe. And this was from our contributor, Nicole Thomas. Hi, Nicole, if you're looking on at the show tonight, thanks very much for your amazing article. And it really helps us learn a few tricks and tips to put our styles and our outfits together. And when I was preparing for tonight's episode, I realized something. I realized that a lot of the principles that we will discuss tonight could be found and are present in so many areas of um, styling and design, including styling yourself, your clothes, including styling your makeup, styling so many different things. So... If you really want to get an all wrong look at how color and different things play a role in the way that we set things up and how it plays a role in you capturing your brand, definitely check out this issue of Personality Magazine. It is on personality.com. Let me show you guys. You know, I always have to plug the magazine here, right? So get it at www.personalitymagazine.com. Read through the issue. The article is very, very helpful and will help you learn some quick tips and principles for you to put styles and outfits together. All right. All right. So I'm not going to stay too long on this topic here because we have a lot to discuss tonight with regard to the topic that we're going to be diving into. 
Uh, I'm excited. I know Juma's in the green room, probably, you know, eating some walnuts because that's his favorite thing to eat. And um, having a good time in the back there. So let's get into it. And let me call him out to the green room. Hello, Juma, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. <laughs> hey, good good evening, everyone. It's great to be here. The green room green room had had lots of walnuts, so that was great. Yes, thank you, yes. Thank you for providing that. You know, you treat your guests very good all the time, so I'm happy. Always, you know, whatever they want, they get. All right, Juma. So I'm excited about this this episode tonight because um, I think this is one of the areas that a lot of people probably they I don't want to say they ignore, but I don't think they take it as seriously. Until they realize that they're in a place where I need images, I need pictures, I need this and I need that, right? And of course, having been um, a veteran in this field for as long as you have been, I think you've run the gamut from design to photography to all those things. So we're going to dive into a little bit of all of those things tonight. And guys, if you're on here, please take notes. You are going to enjoy this episode. Trust me. All right. So... In tonight's episode, we're going to be talking about how you can really capture really high quality brand pictures using your phone and really put an emphasis on how you design and style pictures to capture your brand properly. Mm -hmm. So capturing your brand properly means that you really want to represent yourself visually because it's really important, especially when it, be, when it comes to beauty products. You know, we, we consume beauty products with our eyes before we actually purchase them you know things look attractive things look nice and it really puts us in a different category in terms of in terms of quality in terms of reputation and it repositions us totally in the market right it repositions us totally so let's check out some of the people in the comments oh my gosh you're in two places at once how amazing is that houdini <laughs> uh, Let's say hi to Kendra. Hi, Kendra. Nice to see you. Kendra's our cousin out there in Maryland. Thanks for um, thanks for checking in and thanks for being here. And we also have Denise Bridget Murtha Bachman. Plenty names, Denise. Hi, Denise from Houston. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Really appreciate your presence. <laughs> Why are you so quiet, Juma? Why are you looking out like that? <laughs> um, I just saw looking at it because I'm looking at the comments here. I have them on my running on my phone here. Okay, yes, I forgot you're in like this, you know, big fancy studio. So, you know, but welcome to our humble studios here. <laughs> All right, okay, cool. All right, Juma. So let's dive into it, right? So mm -hmm. let's talk about let's talk about what <clears throat> we need to think about when it comes to taking pictures and really capturing imagery that represents us. So it's not just about taking pictures because lots of people take pictures for their instagram feed or whatever but we want to be able to capture things that represent the brand well mm -hmm. so uh let's talk a little bit about what are some of the basic things we need so we're about to set up a shoot for mm -hmm. ourselves mm -hmm. and um we want to make a list of things that we want to get the very basic so tell us about some of the basic things we need to have done on that list before we even um, before we even start to take action to take any pictures. All right, so so before you even start to think about pictures, um, of course, we we could separate into into two things. You could talk about the kind of the intangible things and the tangible things. So you definitely want to have a camera. Now, in this case, uh, your camera could be anything, but uh, everybody has a phone, so your phone will be a primary camera. Of yeah. course, if you could afford one of those fancier cameras, you get those. But if you can't, use your phone. Your phone is the best camera because you have one. That's why it's the best camera. Um, so you need to have your phone. Uh, the, the native phone apps on most phones can do a whole lot these days. Uh, but sometimes, if you really want that extra punch, you can download another additional phone app um so phone apps like for instance filmic pro that's an app that will give you a lot more control over the settings on your phone phone camera so really? you can change things like the aperture size and the exposure and the white balance and some of the finer details that the native phone apps may not allow you to do 
you can download those apps. Those apps are generally under 10 US if you can afford to do that to add to, and it'll give you much more control over the photography that you're doing with your phone. What's it, what's it called? Let me put it up on the screen. What's it called? It's called Filmic Pro. That's one of the apps you could use. You could use it for video and photography, but it gives you control over um, the settings of your phone camera, just as if you were using a full-on um, DSLR or mir mirrorless camera. Uh, and so you could use that to your advantage when you're, when you're actually taking your photographs. And so you could have a your phone, but use it almost like a professional camera. Of course, that requires... Is this the correct thing? Filmic Pro, yeah, is that how you call it? Yeah, I think that's it. That's the name of it, Filmic Pro, yeah. But this is an app to help you adjust the settings on your camera so mm -hmm. that your phone more closely resembles an actual high quality camera that allows you to adjust the settings. Because because why? Because most times the settings on your phone aren't adjustable. Why is that? Yeah, so what it does, it gives you control over the settings. So it doesn't make the literal image better in the sense of the sensor it hasn't changed on your phone. It's still the same sensor. Mm -hmm. But what it does, it gives you the ability to fine tune what the image looks like. So, for example, your phone usually functions automatically. It will look around the room to see what light is there, and then it will expose the image or make the image lighter or darker, depending on what the, or what light it sees around. And so yeah. you get what the phone's, phone tells you you need. So you only get what the phone tells you you need. So, for example, if you want to take a picture of an object, if you have an object like this that is kind of dark, right? This is my trusty flashlight, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to take a pic object like this, you may you this is black. And let's just suppose you have it on a dark background, like say, like, like I don't know, like you know, see my head, like hairish. Yeah. Hairish <laughs> yeah, but, right? It's on a dark background, right? But if you're taking a dark image on a dark background, you may want this image not to be as dark as the background. You may want it to be lighter. So you may want to open up the aperture a little bit more to let more light in. Or, or increase the or slow down the shutter speed or then you may want to you know you can do different things so that is is different ways you could do you might want to increase the iso but whatever you do you want to make this a little bit lighter and the the apps allow you to control those fine tuning elements so what what so what a what a phone will do a phone will just see hey everything is dark let me just make the whole thing bright whoosh right and, yeah and, it, and everything will get bright but you might not want it to be like that. You might want a kind of a moody, kind of dark feel because it's one of these moody flashlights. And um, and then you could change the settings and you could get it yeah. exactly how you want it. Yeah. It gives you more control. Okay. All right. So, okay. So first things first, we get film, Filmic Pro. What next? Filmic Pro or some other app, right? There are many out there. Filmic Pro is just one of them. So you have your phone, you have your app, if you could afford that. And uh, then you want to think about um what your um subject is going to be and yeah. uh, of course you have your subject to choose it could be a flashlight or it could be a ac remote or whatever it is yes let's just, so, let's just suppose the subject is watch. like a right or it could be a or it could be something that pertains to the subject at hand like a lipstick yeah. <laughs> yes. um uh, and so and so you have that and you want to make sure that you have of course, it has to be clean and ready and prepped, you know, looking the best for the camera because when you take images of small th things, then the details become important. You don't want any dust, any smudges, any fingerprints all over it. So you clean your stuff, you get some nice little, a nice little bottle of, um, of alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, and you clean down your thing, make it nice and stuff like that. In some cases, you may even want, depending on the type of look, look you want to go for, you may want to have some water and some glycerin mixed up together to make it kind of like look a little fresh and stuff like that, depending on what you want. But that's another story. Yeah, I, you know, I'm, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. You you, 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 you asked me the question, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, well, as I told you in the green room, you know, I'm just looking at a, a course, that's which is where the whole idea for this show even came from, because I realized that, you know, a lot more people should really have some basic, principles of not just photography but also styling when it comes to their own product right and mm -hmm. i really saw them using gloves they used to they were wearing gloves the whole time in the shoot and i'm like why are these people using gloves only to realize that apparently fingerprints are a big deal especially when you're dealing with small as you said small objects or objects probably that have a shiny surface and you know you may Correct. touch it and the 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 the, the 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 impression of your fingerprint may come out on the object and that kind of thing so exactly yeah. that 
That's precisely it. Small, especially darker colored objects, the ones that are black, like for instance, like this, if I put my fingerprint on this, it will come out and everybody will see it in the photograph. So you really yeah. want to be able to have clean objects, handle it with gloves if you can, but if you're not a professional, just make sure and hold it at the sides very gingerly so you could position it the way you want to position it. Yeah, yeah. And of course, then you want to consider, um, you know, your styling of your photographs and the elements you need to style it and the area you're going to take it in. So you have to kind of just uh, figure out, well, what kind of feel you want for this. And based on the feel, you gather the necessary elements to put inside of your frame. And of course, we will talk about the principles surrounding that in a little bit. Whenever you're ready, we can talk about the principles surrounding that. But you gather your elements. And um, and the major, the, one of the main things that you have to consider is now that you have this, um, this camera, this app, you have the elements to style your stuff, you have the area you're going to put it in. There's one, one major element that you have to think about, which is probably the most important thing, which is where is the light coming from? Where am I getting this light? Because without light, there is no image. Yes. Right? And I think that, that, my friends, is the key component to getting a proper image. What type of light do you have? What's the quality of the light? And we could go deep into light, but just to keep it simple, is that you have either natural light or artificial light, right? Natural light is like the sun. Artificial light is everything else. And um, unless you're yeah. a professional photographer, then yeah. your, op your first option is always the sun. So set up your, put your setup by a window on a nice morning and you take your images there. But if you can't do that, then you have to find some artificial light, whether that is the bulb in your room, which might, might not be the best, or you want to do like you, you you literally could do like have a flashlight to shine on your on your subject like if you ever watch and you want to do like that you want to shine it shine on it to make it look nice you could have a flashlight to take the picture or you could have like a, a simple light setup you could buy a professional a semi-professional setup from something with a softbox from um amazon or bnh or adorama one of those places with a softbox and set those up for your product shots, which I would recommend, by the way. That's what you should really do because you want to be able to control the light as well. Um, and once you have those elements, you have the lighting, you have the camera, you have the area, you have the, the, the your 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 object, and you have your, um, your what you call those things again, the elements for your setup, then you, you're good to go. You're ready to, to do your, your, um, your whole setup for your shoot. All right, so Filmific, Filmic Pro, that's one app, yes. Uh, yeah, one app to adjust the settings on the camera. And you know, one of the things that the, the girls that I'm looking at, they talked about, they talked about manual settings versus automatic settings. And I suppose Filmic Pro actually helps you set things manually so you could sharpen up your image accordingly. Yeah? Am I correct in saying that? Well, sharpen up your image is, is a post-production function. Although some of the cameras allow you to sharpen the image while you take the picture, which uh, you don't necessarily want that. You want the image to be as neutral as possible. So then you, afterwards, you could go in and make the adjustments to it. So what it allows you to do, it allows you control over the actual image. So it could be the right, um, you know, sometimes images look yellow or blue. Sometimes they look too yellow if you take them in a particular room or it looks kind of bluish. They have like a mm. color tint on them. That yeah. is called the white balance. It makes you control the white balance, whether it's warm or cold, because depending on the type of shot you want to take, you can control that. It, it, it also helps you control the exposure, which is the uh, the aperture, the shutter speed, the ISO, uh, in, in terms of how dark or light the image is. And that is what it helps you control. Everything else, like sharpening, color, saturation, all those different things, whether you have it cropped or you have it uh, tilted or whatever, that could be done in, in post afterwards, in the post-production. So you can edit it all right on your phone in one of those same apps. Okay. Well, so that sounds really technical. <laughs> that it, sounds it, really technical. It does, but I don't want you all to be scared about it. It's not as technical as I'm making it sound. I, I, I'm probably, I probably should try to simplify it. Let me, let me, I'm going to send a picture to here. Let me see if I can get a picture of a shot I took earlier today, which I did not clean the, the, the bottle, but I'm going to send it nonetheless. Ooh, this is a nice one. Let me let me send this one here. Well, okay, so why do you look for your picture? I'm just gonna say hello and shout out to Damian Clark. Hello, Damian. Thank you for being here. Thanks for watching. Thanks for bringing the good vibes. Hey. Should I send it to you and you will share it? Do you want to share it? 
Yeah, you can send it to me and I could share it on the screen, no problem. All right, what, what would you like me to send it to you? And then... You could send it to me. Send it to me in a message and I will and I will get it. I will get it to the people. I will get it to the people so they can see the All picture. Right, so why you do so while you do that, let's um let's start talking about how we can then start moving towards our shoot. So we have our we have our All camera, right, we have our app. We have all we have all gloves to make sure that we don't put any fingerprints on the object. We have the actual object that we're gonna take pictures of. And mm -hmm. so now we're gonna talk about how do we actually set set all these things up. And you know, one of the most important things in setting these things up is first of all, understanding what your brand is overall, mm -hmm. right? Understanding what you're working with in terms of what colors you're going to use or or what colors you want to appear in this particular shot of this particular set of photos what's yeah. the vibe you want to bring you know you want to be christmasy because christmas just passed and we had so many people running christmas campaigns so many people having christmas images you know or you want to be like summer or you want to be like spring it could be seasonal mm -hmm. it could be mm -hmm. it could be happy it could be sad i mean there's so many things to think about but of course if you know if you're clear about what your brand represents that should be much easier to accomplish yes right so having clarity on what what principles guide your brand and what what colors and imagery and style and, and persona that will help you right so before mm -hmm. we even start to take pictures that's also you're also going to need to have those those things in your toolkit your brand brief you know we talked about that last week we talked about creative brief last week all right so we clear about what our brand is we know let's say we are shooting for this lipstick right so we're shooting for Sasha, the Sasha lipstick. So we got a, we got a contract and we're shooting for Sasha lipstick. So now yes. that we now that we are on our way here now, let's talk about some of the the styling principles, which really are design principles mm -hmm. that we could utilize um, in terms of styling or image styling or pictures, right? So okay, so Denise says she's excited and she's downloading the app. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's cool, man. That's nice. <laughs> Okay, Denise, that's really good. Glad to know that, right? All right, so so let's take a look at what some of these principles are. So, Juma, you, I will, I will, I will pop them up here, mm -hmm. and you can kind of explain what these are, and mm -hmm. you know, we'll try to see if we have any examples to show. All right. So the first principle is contrast. So mm -hmm. Can you explain what contrast is in the context of? um getting prepared and uh, to design a photo shoot all right so that the word you use is very key design these are design principles applied in a photographic context um so contrast is literally how it sounds the contrast is how um different elements are in a photograph uh so normally contrast contrast is is defined as the difference between the darkest area and the lightest area of a photograph and in design Contrast could refer to the same thing, or it could refer to size, or it could refer to texture. And once you have those things inside of your or your elements, then that is what contrast is. So you want opposing elements inside of your frame that create interest. Yes. Okay. So we have an example of what contrast may look like, right? So let me just get it. You know. All right. All right. So we got this picture for contrast. So what is contrasting here, Juma? But so, apart from the colors, what else? All right, so definitely the, the, the colors are very, very strong in, in terms of contrast. Um, mm -hmm. You want to think about the kind of the mottling of the background and the smoothness of the, of the comb, and I guess as a brush of some sort, uh, yes, even the texture of the brush. Yes. And what, what is that thing in the, in the container there? I don't know what that is. That looks like some sort of hair product or something. Yeah, so the hair product looks kind of rough. And then you have the smoothness of the leaf. So that, that creates contrast. But the strongest thing for me in this is like the colors, that pink and that green. Because mm -hmm. red and green are opposite each other on the color wheel. And so and so they, they generally contrast. So having anything in that range will, will have visual contrast and will make things pop. All right. Yeah. Okay. So we definitely want to have... Now, I just want to say this. Every picture you take doesn't necessarily need to embody every, sing every single one of these principles. Mm -hmm. But it's good to keep things in mind, especially if you want 
your image to stand out in a particular way. It could have one or two. They may have one or two or three, right, Juma? Yes. At any yes. one given time. So sometimes you may see us use the same pictures for different examples because they may they may embody different elements in the same image, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So contrast is one thing, right? So let's talk about something else that image images should have. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about balance. Let's talk about balance. Can right. you explain so, what balance is in, in image? So balance is the principle that says every element in an image or design carries visual weight. So when you look at an image as a whole, um, some parts of the image will feel heavier than others. And that can be expressed in color. It can be expressed in shape. It can be expressed in the sizes of the subject. And sometimes you have symmetrical balance where everything on one side of the image and the other side of the image are, are almost even. And then you have asymmetrical balance where the elements on one side is bigger, larger, heavier than the elements on the other side. Both are fine. You just have to know what kind of feel you're going for. If you want somebody to feel a little, little bit off kilter or you want to lead their eye somewhere, asymmetrical might work. If you want somebody to have a sense of levelness, a sense of evenness, a sense of stability, then you have um, symmetrical balance. Okay. So is this a good example of, of, of balance? All right. So in this, in this image, this yeah. is, I would call this asymmetrical balance because even though the, there are six elements, there are three on either side, the, the large element on the left is of course, larger than the element to the far right. And you can see that in this in this layout, it literally is laid out like you could draw a line down the center and have three objects on one side and three objects on the other side. So this has asymmetrical balance. Like it wanted to have symmetrical balance, but that brush on the left-hand side just made it asymmetrical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay. So, I mean, this, this tends to help. And I see sometimes people use these kinds of things when they have to, um, I guess, Similar to the way this is used here, they have similar products, but different products, for, but for a similar purpose. You know what I mean? And they kind of show all these things in one image. And it looks good, you know, you don't feel confused or overwhelmed. And I think that's the key. You want to be able to accomplish that. Even though things may be different, you know, you still want to be able to evoke a sense of, oh, this looks good when people take a look at it. Yes. Right? Yeah. All right. Okay. So that's principle number two. So let's no, let's talk about principle number three, which is white space. And explain what white space is. <laughs> okay, so white space can also be referred to as a negative space, which literally is like the empty space in a photograph or in a design. Um, and it kind of serves as breathing room for your eyes, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have a lot lots of elements inside of a photograph or in a design. And you have white space it gives you space your eyes some time to rest right and so if you have elements all over the page it it, it it can feel cluttered if you don't do it right but if you have white space in between those elements it gives your eye uh space to um to breathe and white space generally could speak as loudly as having elements on a page so what you're not seeing adds to the weight of the picture as well yes so I'm going to show you guys two examples of white space. And please note, white space doesn't literally have to be white. <laughs> no, it, does, it does not, yeah. Right? It doesn't have to be white. It could be like this. Mm -hmm. which, that's a good one. Which is, which is pink. Right, that's right? a good I one. Found it, I found this picture was really attractive. Uh, there's something about it that really caught my attention. Yeah, because because it, it almost, it, it the elements on the right-hand side shout because the there's a lot of, empty space on the left hand side your eye your eye naturally enters from the left we read from left to right in the western world say so i will naturally enter from the left and if you look at this image you kind of could literally say oh let me put one line of text so if you had a logo you just like drop it boom right in the middle of the white space there and it will people will see the logo first and then see what you do see what kind of products you have and so yeah, yeah this is a really good example of that yeah so guys, take note. If you want to have your logo in the middle, or on in the middle of the white space, and then your product or your service, or even yourself on the other side of the picture. Sometimes we see that as well. People have images of themselves, themselves on one side of a of a picture, and the entire the rest of the picture is completely white. Yes, they have copy as well. Yeah. Right. Um. 
And this one is more, kind of white space too, but less so, would you say? Yeah, so this has nice negative space as well. Um, and it kind of shows each element, it's each element's individual strength. So it's not so much trying to preserve the white space as it's trying to find a place for each element within the white space, within the negative space. And so it speaks of almost being um, not necessarily organized from a grid perspective, but organized in almost like they're having a meeting or a conversation there in a circle. And so yeah. they, they, they're laid on the page to kind of lead your eye from the top left to go around. And then you kind of meet up this brush, this big brush at the bottom. So it kind of guides your eye in a kind of a circle. So that that's a way you could use it as well. But it, it has good negative space as well. Yeah, so I like this. I like the way you talk. I like the way you say it. Like they're having a conversation. It makes it actually makes me think about another another principle that we will um, look at in a minute. And I'll tell you which one when we when we come upon it. But it makes me think about about that. All right. Mm -hmm. So let us. All right. So principle number. How far we have we gotten? One, two, three. So let's look at number four now. So number four is emphasis. An emphasis in your pictures. Explain what that means. <laughs> okay, so emphasis uh, it talks about a particular element or a particular part of your image or your design or your photograph that stands out the most. Um, and you 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 take the photograph in such a way as to make that thing quote unquote pop, right? Mm -hmm. um, most times the emphasis is placed on the subject that you're shooting. And so that's the thing that you want to stand out and you can make it stand out in different ways. You can make it stand out by using depth of field, essentially just making the background blurred and the image sharp. You can do it by color. You can do it by positioning. You can do it by size, but you want to place some emphasis on that particular element. Uh, but it, 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 could, it could vary depending on what type of thing you want to see in the image. It could vary, vary depending on the goal of the image. So there are much plenty ways to create emphasis, but whatever that emphasis is, is on one particular subject or point in the picture. Yeah. So here's a good example of emphasis, guys. I saw this and I said, this is this is definitely it. Right? So this is, as you can see, the products themselves, let me just remove the banner so you can see it properly. The products themselves are in the center of the image and we just have repetition of the, the orange, is it a snowflake? Oh, and, and some other type of wooden mm -hmm. image, like a clothespin around it, you yes. know, so you, can, so you can really see. So your yeah, eyes kind of just go straight to the center of it. And you yeah. feel good when you look at it, you know, it's not too cluttered. There's some white space in there. It, you don't feel overwhelmed. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The colors are nice too. So when you look, when I look at this image, it seems like the elements are laid out in a pattern. So the things in the center point, the, the, things is, the two things are happening. The things in the center interrupt the pattern, so you know they're the emphasis, but also the 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 elements around the thing, like the pieces of the tree there, those little ne pine needles, they are yes. pointing towards the product as well. Um, and this is really, really, really nice, nicely laid out. You get, the colors are great, so you have the orange, and you have a bit of um, outdoorsiness to it, but you also have something citrusy and fresh, and it's pointing towards that, that center thing. So all of those little the tree pine needles are pointing yes. towards the thing in the center, you know? So the other one before, they were having a conversation with each other. In this image, everybody's looking, staring at these people in the center. Yes, it's like all eyes on me, right? Yeah. Right. You know when you see that a lot as well? You see that a lot when... <laughs> I know you guys are going to laugh at this, but you know... Okay, so like when you know when Beyonce is dancing on stage and she has her dancers, and she has on gold and they may have on black, or something like yeah. that. You see, like performers do that all the time to show themselves as the, I guess, as the star of the show. Mm -hmm. You know, so as I said, you know, we do use these principles all the time in different things, but we don't really think about them. So this is just us explaining what those are. Yeah. So, all right. So we have Renee saying, "Great session. We'll definitely apply these concepts moving forward." You want to do that, Renee? They will definitely help you. And Tisha is saying, loving this, Jamila and Juma. Hi, Tisha. Tisha is such a nice lady. She's hey, so Tisha. pleasant and so helpful. Thanks so much for bringing your good vibes. Appreciate it so much. All right. Okay, so th those are four principles I think we went through there. Contrast, balance, white space, and emphasis. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to move on to principle number five. 
And this principle is movement. Right. So can you explain what movement is? All right, so we we saw movement in a couple of the images before, and I kind of alluded to it. Actually, I pointed it out in one image explicitly. So yes. movement refers to the way the your eye moves through an image or a design, or uh, and and it directs your eye in a particular particular direction. So you could look at a photograph yeah. and kind of yes. intuitively know I'm supposed to look at the bottom left first and then the top right, and it carries yes. your it almost carries your eyes through a journey to reach that particular point. Um, yes. So. You kind of emphasize the place you want your eyes to start off at and it guides you into the subject or guides you into the point of emphasis inside of the image. Or it may take you to several places in one image. So your eyes could be uh, shooting to the left and to the right and to the left and to the right, depending on the yeah. pattern or depending on the layout or depending on how the, the subject or the objects inside of the frame um, are, are, are put together, are composed. Yes. yes. And I, I know we definitely saw it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this yeah. enters, this makes me enter from the top left and it carries me around in a circle and finish off at the big brush below. So this gives me movement as well. Because it's interesting, the only thing that is straight, like totally horizontal is the is the brush. What do you call that thing? The, the eyelash. The eyelash curler. The eyelash curler. <laughs> the eyelash curler, right. I don't, I don't know what these things are. I, I don't curl my eyebrows. <laughs> so the eyelash yeah. curler is the only thing that is almost horizontal. Yeah. Right? So it kind of leads me in. Everything else is pointing towards the center. The eyelash color is horizontal. So almost like I want to enter from that side. It's the place yeah. of least of least tension in the image. So it make it makes me e it makes it easy for me to enter my eyes in that point and go around the circle. So that creates yeah. the movement. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. So that's a good example of movement, right? So our eyes, how our eyes move through an image, right? Yeah. So let's see. All right, so Tisha is saying here, when you get a second, can you talk about the app Denise mentioned? I missed that part. Okay, we will definitely go back and talk about it. It's called, it's called, I have the banner here, Filmic Pro app. So there's an app, it's called Filmic Pro. It's supposed to help you adjust the settings on your phone. But Tisha is also a photographer, you know, she does her personal brand branding images. So I'm sure she would appreciate some of these tips as well. Right, right? excellent. All right, Tisha, so let's... Look, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to tell Tisha, looking forward to her, her her jumping on my content. I'm on a break. That's why you're not seeing me. Oh, I'm okay. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm sure I'm she will be around. I'm sure she will be around. Yeah. Um, we had one more comment. Janelle. Hello, Janelle. Hello. Hello from the other side. Hello, Janelle. Hey, Thank Janelle. You Thank you for being here. Always bringing the good vibes. Janelle, All Janelle right? our neighbor. Janelle. Yes. All right. Um... All right, so let's talk about this. I don't know if I have, I don't know if I managed to capture this one before, but mm -hmm. you can tell me. And this one is proportion. Mm -hmm. so let's talk about proportion. All right, so proportion is kind of similar to balance and emphasis in the sense that it it talks about the size of objects in an image in relation to each other. Like, um, so you know, uh, it's 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 like how one element relates to another element in terms of the size right and it it kind of suggests that typically the bigger elements are more important right um and so it, it encourages you to include elements of different sizes in your image and so that is yeah. what proportion is right so could this could this picture suffice because i know we talked about that we talked about this a little bit before Look yeah. So, so, mm -hmm. so this image does multiple things. Um, we could we could say the only way this will work with proportion is if that brush on the left just happens to be the most important thing. Um, right. If it's not the most important thing, if all of these elements are of equal importance, technically this is not proportion. It just happens to be bigger. <laughs> right. Okay. It just it just happens it just happens to be bigger. Um, so it does balance. It does. Um, it does. It does um, white space a little bit, but for proportion, you're gonna have to say, let me have the most, in the, and the most important element technically on a physical level could be smaller, but what you do is you bring it to the front so that it appears bigger. It has more presence and that right. is how proportion will help you. So we can, so we can leverage that to kind of, 
in a way, I suppose, you know, I, and I think we see this sometimes too, when we, um, when we see, when we see in movies or in other things, people try to make a small thing look big by yeah. making it, bringing it close up, or even the way the angle is, the angle is shot from. You know, mm -hmm. people kind of get to see that this thing looks really big, even though it may be small. You know, <laughs> small people, small and stature tend to do that a lot in their pictures. Yeah, which is really good, a really good trick on the eyes. Yeah, so there's there's a literal way. literal name for that. Um, when you do it with the intention of tricking people wholly, it's called false perspective, where um, you make things different sizes by putting something closer to the camera and something further away. That and that's how that's what they use in the Lord of the Rings to make the hobbits appear smaller than Gandalf. Um, so they literally oh. were in the same room, and but they made him appear much bigger by putting him closer to the camera and it just kind of fixed the whole set to, to look that way. Um, and so they, they tricked our eyes, but they were same human size. It's just that forced perspective. Um, and then there are times when you have something in the front of the frame and you, again, depth of field is very important. The, the thing in the front is sharp, everything else is blurry. And so that gives you the emphasis that you want in front there and, and creates a different size image, which is proportionally stronger than another piece of the image so we have an example of that here like this one yeah so that this is this is a this is a few things here yeah, yeah this is this apart from the fact that this has very lovely color that the yellow and that pink together is 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 primo love those colors together and of course you would agree with that because it's very similar to your brand colors um, yes <laughs> and, um, well as a matter of fact it's a good thing you mentioned that because color is the next principle Oh yeah, colors in C. So we identify that 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 is 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 very very important. So color is kind of speaks for itself. Color is basically uh, how the uh, the visuals, the color in the visuals communicate, and so it can color can evoke emotion. I've spoken about this many times when I talk about lighting. Um, so depending on the mood you want, we know red is passion. We know yellow is hope. We know green is is um, uh, a blue is serenity. Uh, we know black is power, so there, there are different things. Uh, well, of course, you won't have a black light, but you might have black elements inside of your image. And if you want to keep the thing bright and nice, you have bright and nice and cheerful colors. You might want to have a nice toned down pastel, um, almost monotone palette if you want things to be very toned down. So you tend to get skin colors that are things for skin. You tend to want to have colors that are very pastel and close to the skin color. And people mm -hmm. like to see that and they feel come more comfortable with that. You wouldn't want to have like a red and a green together in a skincare product in a very strong way because, you know, it doesn't make people feel comfortable. So my skin isn't green, you know, yes. or the skin that's purple, purple and green. And nobody wants that in a, in a commercial. But if you see something like nice and pastel, like something sand colored or peach, peach colored, or, you know, a nice light brown or something or something hazel, uh, people or tend to cry. Green or something. Yeah, mint green can work as well because that's as light as well, and um, mm -hmm. and the colors play off your emotions, they play off your psychological um, leanings, you know. Uh, although I would say, if somebody were to bring out a brand and they were to flip that script and put these unnatural colors in skincare, they could take a risk and they might win on that too, because that would make them stand out in the market positioning again. Yeah, I suppose. But then again, you know what? It really, when it comes to colors, think about your brand. Think about what those are. Right, and think about how you could actually have things that complement, uh, contrast with those brand colors you have. So it's not just about kind of spinning the color wheel and wherever it stops you use the color, right? It really is yeah. about choosing the ones that work best with your brand and the ones that represent your brand best. Yes. Exactly. Right. Okay. So let's talk about the last principle now before we um, move on. And the last principle here is repetition. Now, right. I don't have an exact different repetition, but I think we could use one of the ones from before. We can. Um, let, me, let me see which one you'll pick. See which one you'll pick. I wanna, I'm going to choose this one. <laughs> good choice. Good choice. <laughs> good choice. I'm getting good at this. I'm good at this. I'm good at this now. Right? Um, I mean, it has emphasis, yes, in the middle of the product, but definitely we detected the pattern from before. So the orange yeah. and the orange and the orange and the orange. And... Sometimes people may use this. They may have like three of the same products on a page mm -hmm. or 
a pattern that's rep repeated all through the image, you know, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. So you, you arrange the elements in the photograph in a way that creates a visual pattern. And when something is predictable and is a pattern, it kind of makes people feel like they're a lot safer. It calms them down. Um, but yeah. then you could also have a chaotic kind of thing going on where it feels like you make, it makes you uneasy. So depending on how you want the image to feel, you could create like patterns so people could follow. And, and then you break the pattern. Like in this instance, the pattern is broken by the thing you want people to focus on. Um, yeah. And so you see, like in this case, you have balance as well as you have repetition. So you have these um, tangerines or Portugal's, um, or if you're from Trinidad, Putigal's laid out. <laughs> Uh, or they might be just be oranges. Um, they might be that too. So you have three at the top, three at the bottom. You have two on either side of the products. And then you have the, a snowflake on either side. And then you have the wooden sleds and skis surrounding them. Oh, and then you, and that's, the what owner, those that's what those are, yeah. And then you have yeah. in the background, you have like a sweater kind of cotton pattern, which of, obviously it seems like a piece of cloth. Or like if you, if yeah. you chop the nice part out of the front of your sweater and just laid it out. Um, yes. and you have that you know it's interesting yes. it's, it's meant to feel it's literally like meant to feel tropical as well as wintry at the same time which is an interesting contrast so that is also contrast inside of this one yeah so two different seasons you know mm -hmm. because yeah because if if we we will identify with this fruit very tropical for us here in oranges you know or you normally see oranges around springtime in the u.s not so Long spring time, I think. I don't know. I could be wrong. I'm not gonna be rest. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, okay, so those are our eight principles. So just to review them again, guys. So there's contrast, there's balance, there's white space, there's emphasis, there's mm -hmm. movement, mm -hmm. there's proportion, there's color, and there's repetition. Yes. And these design principles, while we may have explained them and they may sound technical. They are not. We use these principles every day from the way yeah. we put our makeup yeah. on. We emphasize, we put emphasis. We have white space on different parts of our face. So we don't mm -hmm. put color on our forehead and color on our cheeks and color everywhere. You know, we want certain places to be white or empty, you know, and we want to emphasize certain things. We may have contrasting lip color, eye color. You know, and I could speak about it in the context of makeup looks because that's what I use all the time. But if you think about it in the way that we style ourselves, the way that we dress, you know, you want to be able to dress your images in the same type of way using mm -hmm. different elements, right? So um, so I want to talk a little bit about some of the elements people could use to achieve these looks because styling your picture doesn't have to be a big, fancy, expensive exercise, right? It doesn't have to be. As a matter of fact, we have some TikTok videos from an account that does this all the time. So, Juma, this is a challenge for you. So, I'm going to show you some of these, some of these videos, mm -hmm. and we're going to look at some of the elements that she, this person uses, and probably you're going to tell me which principle or which principles may be present in these. Right. Videos. But just to, just to tell everybody, I do not know which videos. Um, I've not seen these ones before. I know of the accounts because I was the account that comes on my feed. So I send Jamila to it. But I don't know what video she's gonna pick. So I'm gonna be totally surprised by whatever she picks. And hopefully I could figure out <laughs> the, the elements that are involved in it. So let's yes. go. Okay. So before we check, so Tisha is saying yes, she's she's been missing you. Oh, thank you so much, Tisha. All right. And El Charles Leon is saying, Thanks for sharing great info. You're welcome, Leona. Thanks for being here. Appreciate you. All right, so let's dive into the videos. Let me see how many videos I have here. I have one, two, three, four, five. So Ooh, let's five. take a look at the first one. No. No, I don't want your number, no. I don't want to give you mine, no. I don't want to meet you nowhere, no. I don't want none of your time. I like the fact that it's so short. <laughs> so she definitely used yeah. contrast there. You can see the yellow background with the with the with the image that is popping out of it. And uh, I love in her videos. I've seen her do it before. I haven't seen this one before. How she uses the light to cause like almost like sunlight, like natural shadows in the in yeah. the thing, which is a nice element of the style that she brings. So there's contrast. There is a a kind of a, I can't remember the 
it's a kind of a reddish color. It's in kind of a warmer tone bottle. Uh, and you have the yellow background, which makes it kind of pop out. And then you have this white stock, white space below of the block and the table. And of course, it creates some interest with the shadows. So it's almost like a few things are working together here. Definitely contrast, definitely element um, emphasis. No, not so much balance. The only thing that's balanced inside is the fact that they put the bottle in the dead center. Um, yeah. But you, you have you have asymmetrical balance in that the shadows are off to the left side, and that is how she put the elements together. So those are pretty simple elements. Some of those are custom made, but they're pretty simple elements as well. You know, one of the things that one of the things I came across too when um, doing looking into more photography, one of the things that they talked about is the way people create sharpness and softness with shadows, and that was interesting to see her do that. And I guess depending on how you well, as you talk about all the time, depending on the source of the light yeah, and how small the light is, how large it is, how far mm -hmm. away it is, how close it is, it could really make a difference. And it could create, it could go from soft and whimsical to real scary real quick. <laughs> real <laughs> quick. How sharp real, the Real quick. Sharp. Could be scary. <laughs> could be scary real quick. <laughs> well, let me tell you. Let me give you a good example of that, like a practical example. So that light she's using, mm -hmm. I have the exact same light lighting me right now. Exact same light. Right. The, dif the difference between her light and my light is that my light has a light modifier in it. It has a big, nice umbrella. You can think of it as a big, fluffy cloud in front of the sunlight. So it softens the light on my face. The light that she has in her image is very hard. She literally has no modifier nothing on it so the light is coming in from a small point from a small rectangular led and that is shining harshly on the image but it gives very nice color but it also makes the shadows very harsh and that's how she got that image yes okay yeah. so i suppose in a case like that one of the things I, I know you recommend from before is that using a ring light helps diffuse the light but you also have to know how to kind of position that and set that up yeah, yeah so so ring lights don't really help diffuse the light the ring lights because of the structure of the ring light, like I literally, see, literally have one here light in the background right now. Yeah. Um, so, so ring lights allow for uh, shadowless lighting. So you have your image in the middle of your ring light and the, because it's, the light is equal all the way around, it eliminates the shadow. So you almost get like a, a very light shadow going all the way around. Um, so it's supposed to be shadowless. So but the way to get the light soft is by diffusing the light, by putting some piece of, like, a thing like this. Let me show you. Putting something like this over the light so it will shine yeah. through, and that helps diffuse the light. All yeah. right, so let's... Or you, could use, you, could, you could use wax paper or baking paper, too. That'll work, too. And those are all low-cost items, guys, low-cost items. Yeah, right? go in your cupboard and get some wax paper. So if you notice, one of the things that the girl using the paper chain video just now is a, is a branch, right? You get it for free outside. You can just go and get a piece of a, piece of a tree and yeah. use that, you know. And we'll see some of the other things that she uses in the other video. So let's look at another one. Yeah. Yeah, that foil, that foil boss. <laughs> <laughs> you want come and I got some foil. That yeah. foil, that foil coming in clutch, you know. The foil is really nice because the foil gives a kind of a, it, it, if, if it's out of focus, it almost looks like, uh, it almost looks like a, a real kind of nice textured surface or metallic yeah. textured surface. It gives a kind of a feel to it. Yes. Um, but it, but it, because of how it is, it's it's refracting the light. It can mm -hmm. work for a lot of different applications. It can work for organic stuff. It can work for rustic stuff. It can work for industrial stuff. All you need to do, if you want it industrial, let's keep the foil smooth. If you want it rustic, let's give it a few crinkles. You know, yeah, you can, that's, you can do different things. Foil, but it. Back out, yeah. You know, you can do lots of stuff with foil. But yeah, yeah. but the principles in that definitely there's some contrast going on there. There's emphasis. Um, yeah, but she then tends to do her thing center weighted, so there's balance in that sense. 
and um and the yeah so those, those are the things i would think come out there and color i too, like the way that she uses i think she uses that looks like spray starch no that's a special sp snow spray it literally is like a special spray that mimics oh. snow yeah oh okay i, I yeah. but did you have come but the same thing with spray starch looks like it's spray white on the bottle to look like you know f like it's cold and frosty um i'm not sure it will look the same but i think maybe <laughs> Feel free to try things out. You know, your necessities, the mother of invention. Feel free to try things out. If you don't have it available to you and you don't want to bring in a whole bottle of snow, a can of snow, just try stuff. Do anything with work. You never know. You'll discover things that, that work that people don't know about. And then that'll be your trade secret. That's right. So make a list of all the things you could keep, right? So from snow or spread starch to foil to bristle board to a branch, all these things could be props in your shoot. All of yeah. these things could be props in your shoes. Yes. All right, so Tisha is saying nice tip with the wax paper. So yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely. Wax paper is a, a, a clutch diffuser. Right. Okay, so let's look at another uh when you go in the kitchen and see how it's made eh? um interesting <laughs> um so that's a trick i've seen her do before essentially she has you literally can print out go get a laser print and print out like a pool an image of a pool and mm. then put water in a clear or acrylic, acrylic container over it and you almost like have it looks like a real pool and yeah. that's what you did and she placed the thing inside of it um and so the ripples are being formed of course with a hair blow dryer and uh, she's taking it she's stuck up between her knees. Uh, so that's another contrasty thing. The, the white on the blue, ni very nice contrast. It's kind of the balance is off because the thing is skewed, which makes it more visually interesting. And of course, the color is a big thing. That blue against that white is a big thing. Yeah. And I like the way that she, um, I like the way that, you know, you can just print something out and voila, you have a pool, right? So these are easy. So if you have a Pyrex dish, guys, I'm sure it's a Pyrex dish that she was using there to create her pool. A Pyrex dish with some water. And I'm just make sure and, and, and be sure and be careful. Don't let the blow dryer fall in the Pyrex dish, okay? Just be careful. Yeah, you don't you want don't that want happening. Industrial. You don't want um, what work, workplace, uh, OSHA, what? OSHA stuff, occupational health and safety. Yes. So Janela is saying they were not, they were, they were tastefully used to. Tacky is not cool. What was this for the use? I'm not sure what she's talking about. Maybe you could tell us, Janelle. I probably said something earlier. Yeah, well, so far yeah. she's done, she's done a great job with whatever she's been using. So I would agree with that statement. Yes. All right. So we have two more videos. Oh, this one is definitely negative space. That one is like negative space forever. Um, yeah. And just some some fine visual interest with the shadows, you know? Yes. Uh, so that's, that's definitely negative space for that one. You know, a contrast, obviously, because it contrasts with the background. Yes. And, and yeah, you could, I could you could see the shadows looking definitely softer in this one. So it wasn't so as, it wasn't as harsh as the one we saw before. So yeah. this, this picture was styled literally, what it looks like to me, a piece of white paper or a piece of white bristle board. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's um, take the paper and you, you know, in photography, they call that a seamless when you have the paper basically curving at a, a around a 90 degree angle. Yes. Um, something called it a, a, a cyclical, well, it's a seamless if you have paper. Um, and basically, that's what you need. You just need a sheet of bristle board and you just bend it. And so that you won't see a line in the in the background, it'll be it will be seamless. You know, yeah. shadows will be smooth. Yeah. So I mean, right now your proper bill is probably less than fifty dollars. Foil. <laughs> Foil. Um, take, go by your grandmother. Take take her for her for fake plant and don't tell anything. Yes. Do that. I'm not encouraging stealing. Huh? People don't go and steal. Your <laughs> but let's go outside and get a bush. Please bush them outside. No, but right? if you want a consistent, if you want a consistent shadow, because that's how she's using a fake plant over and over again. You just get oh, a bush. Oh yeah, fake plant. Three or four fake plants, you know, and you're using that, and you, you go buy um, can we call? We know we don't have any sponsors. You go buy one of those variety stores, 
<laughs> and um, you get some fake plants, get three, four fake plants in different um, sizes and shapes, and you use that. Yeah. Voila, you have props for your for your for your for your product photo shoot. And uh, you could use a piece of bristle board, get one in your brand color, get two in your brand colors, and we'll talk about that, right? All right, so here's the last one. These came out better than I expected. Okay, so let's try that one again because I think the video got a bit cut off. One more time, one more time. These came out better than I expected. Did you see what she did there? Yeah, 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 definitely. I love that one. Um, so she has a mirror, right? Yes. And um, of course, you want the water. So it's reflecting, I would assume it's reflecting the sky as well. Yes. It's a garden hose is in there. And yep, a garden the hose. Yes. You know, you know, thank you, Wasser. And um, <laughs> she has it pouring. And, and the main thing is that the light is what? The sun is natural light. The sun, soul, the natural light, solar energy, solar photography. Um, yeah. so you get your solar light. And, you know, I know of one of my um, TikTok connect, uh, well, TikTok followers, TikTok friends. Yeah, one of the local uh, ladies. I, I don't know, can I call her name? Sure. Yeah, so Kali on, on TikTok, she does a lot of product photography and she does a lot of her stuff outside. Like, uh, mm -hmm. literally, waits for a nice sunny day goes outside and does it and um and if you want to and the sun is really nice and hot you can literally hold a piece of wax paper up to block the sun and get a nice diffused light that you want as well and you know what i think one of the advantages of living in this part of the world and i don't think we recognize that is the fact that we have a pretty steady um number of hours of daylight it may go up by go up or down by an hour but the sun doesn't set at like 4 p.m here and 3 p.m right and rise at like 8 a.m we still have a lot of sunlight we could take advantage of dusk dawn and during the day so take advantage of that so That's i'm gonna right. take a minute and check out some of the comments coming up now so tanya is saying happy new year jamila and Jamal. hey happy tanya year, what's tanya. up what the deal with the deal tanya <laughs> and then she's saying good night everyone um and teacher is saying ah the mirror shots are always lovely yes they are Right, exactly. and then she says, "See, lots of TikTokers using it to reflect a YouTube video as well." Right, um, right. So yeah, so I mean, these are some things that you know you really want to. I guess once you have your product, you really want to be able to practice it. You know, you only get better after practice, mm -hmm. and you become good after practice. All right, so um, I like what we went through here. So there's one more thing I would like to show you. And I found this to be very interesting. What about my picture? Oh, yes, your picture. I forgot. Okay. So there are two more things I'd like to show you. <laughs> okay, cool. Ooh, this is nice. Okay, let me go. Let me show. I, did, I didn't um, do a whole, you know, I had a whole thing I was going to do, but there isn't enough time today to do it. Um, right. So let's see how we can show this, show your picture. And... <laughs> um, you can explain to the people what you would like them to see. Sure. So, of course. I will explain when the picture becomes visually available. Okay, so here it is. Yes. Let's see what it is. Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, so this is... <laughs> I have to laugh because... I literally, this was a test shot that I did and I ended up giving up on the whole thing because I said, I don't have time to do this right now. But this is nice. Are you, you took this picture with your phone today? Yeah, with my phone, you know? Wow. Let me tell wow. you what I did. So I, mm -hmm. I, I grabbed one of my wife's old perfumes. As you can see, the bottle is like half empty. Right. Um, right. And um, I didn't clean it. I was supposed to clean it and do a sort of drama with it. I didn't clean it. Yes, I'm seeing obviously... fingerprints. Obviously, when you're doing makeup and stuff, some of the foundation will get on it. So that whole section of, of perfumes have different hair care products and different things on it. So yes. I grabbed it from the from the thing inside. And I grabbed one of these fake pearls that she had there in her jewelry box. 
And I said, okay, what will feel nice? So what you want a feeling of luxury? Of course, this is Dahlia Devin Javinci. So you want a feeling of luxury? So I said, let me put this in the foreground. And then I took this, this same flashlight I've been showing you all, all evening. And that yeah. flashlight is right behind it, shining a light into the bottle. So it gives it a nice lift. Um, and the oh. background is my iPad. I just put other search diamonds on, on Google. And that's yeah. an image of, image of diamonds that is just full screen on my iPad. And it's sitting on one of those mirrors that you have with a handle. Those those handle mirrors. Right. Yeah. Right. And um, and then I edited it on my phone. And I edited it on my phone with the regular camera app. And this is the image I got. This is not, I, I'm not, I really thought you downloaded this from somewhere, like you know, some one of those <laughs> internet sites. This is pretty cool. So this is really easy. So yes, pearls. You know, you got pearls. You know, I actually thought the background was foil. Yeah, I actually thought it was foil. With a light shining on it it kind of looks like that but when you said diamonds and one of the things i was concerned about really was how do we you know sometimes when you take pictures with your phone and you take it of, a, of another screen the screen looks a little pixelated in the background how do we avoid that um well it depends on a, a couple of different things generally if you have a full screen image and you have it, and the make sure the image is high resolution. That's the main thing. Okay. Once the image is high resolution, and you put it at this, a certain distance behind, it, it should be fine. Um, sometimes you, what do you used to get? Sometimes you used to get like the, 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 the almost the pixels in the screen, the RGB pixels showing up, but you don't get that again because all of these screens are high resolution now. You don't really get that again. You just generally get the, a nice smooth image in the background, but make sure the original image is high resolution. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. That, but that was a good one. That's a good tips. I appreciate. I appreciate that. And um, Tanya is saying really creative and use of everyday items. So really creative use of everyday items. And that's true. And that's the point we want people to get that, you know, you can take your own product shot of your beauty products. It doesn't have to be a big expensive photo shoot. You can literally use items around the house to be able to accomplish the, those things, right? So I like that picture, Juma, a lot. All right, so one last thing I would like to show you guys before we bring, before we wrap things up and we bring the show to close this evening is I want to show you one other thing, which is really how to use paper. And I came across this blog post again because mm -hmm. I'm doing some studying of, oh... Don't tell me it's not going to load. Oh, my goodness. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. All right. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put the... I'm going to put the... Uh, the the link in here in these banners, and you guys can check it out. And it really was how you could utilize paper, the paper in different ways, to create backgrounds, to cut out shapes, to, to mm. do different things to be able to accomplish the looks that you would like for your brand. And it really is a great article and it really is a great example. And the website is called the weekend-creative.com, uh, which incidentally is the, the team of the two young ladies. I'm learning more about this photography and how to just style photos, product photos. Oh, now it comes up. Thank you. Thank you for coming up long after the point, the fact. But the point is that check out the Weekend Creative. I think it's excellent and excellent resource. Um, and these are some of the resources that they actually gave us in the course, but I saw this on their public blog site and I felt this was a good thing for me to share. So check this out, it really helps. But remember, everything should be guided by your brand. Don't go and pick any old random colors or any old random things. And it really should be, so the, the styling of a photo really happens on two levels. It happens on the level of your brand and it also happen on the level happens on the level of the product. So, like for example, the bottle that you just you know is luxury, is fragrance. You know, you want to feel good, smell good, and fragrance is normally you know one of the more pricey items that people have when it comes to um, self care and um, beauty. You know, you really want to reflect that diamonds, pearls. You know, that kind of luxurious, well lit type of um, type of image and. The way that the light shines through the glass as well also adds a lens to that. And did you put a filter over it? Um, all I, I adjusted the, I desaturated it. I did some adjustments in Elta, but in in the editor, sorry. But 
uh, filters are essentially adjustments that people get automatically. Right. So if by filter you mean if I edited the photograph, yes, I edited the photograph. Yes. So well, for, well, for, some, for somebody like me, I would know how to make all those adjustments. I might just pick a filter, which, yeah, may, yeah. which may help. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. I actually started off by using a filter and it didn't do what I wanted it to to. So wow. I then went in and fine-tuned it, the, the contrast, the saturation, the sharpness, the vignettes, and all those different things. Right. Okay. All right, guys. So, so before we close, just a recap. So tonight we explored eight principles of design, which really is eight principles of design in not just graphic design, but in um <laughs> but in um styling. I'm laughing because guess who's on the feed? Daddy is on the feed saying thanks for all the beauty tips. Sure, Daddy. Apply them to yourself and they will, you will have. <laughs> will be, yes. Will be going on the feed, yes. I, 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 I shop. Look, look at this one picture. Look at his styling, you know. Yes. Hi, Dad. For, thanks for commenting what? on the feed. <laughs> <laughs> you invited him? This is so, this is so no, shocking. No, no, no. Did you know Daddy's savvy now? Daddy's Facebook savvy now. I saw, I saw Facebook think. memory from 10 years ago when I was teaching him how to do email, and I still am teaching him how to do that. So, you yeah. know. Yeah. Anyway, Ari, thanks for coming on. Good, good thanks for jumping on to see the conversation. <laughs> All right. So as we close, remember we, we looked at eight principles, which is again balance, white space, emphasis, movement, proportion, repetition, and color and contrast, right? So all these principles don't need to be present in every single picture, but it's mm -hmm. good for you to have, you know, two or three. I could to really be able to take your pictures to another level, your images to another level. You can use everyday items. Remember to make your list before you decide to start shooting pictures. Be clear about what your brand is. Know what colors you're going to use. Know what look and feel. Is it luxury? Is it casual? Is it everyday? Is it is it sporty? Is it serious? Mm -hmm. And choose the colors accordingly. Colors to complement the colors of your brand. Choose the props accordingly. You know, you don't want to have a um a tropical shoot with snowflakes as your props it doesn't make any sense right so of course you want to be able to choose the props and you want to style your image not just at the brand level but also at the appropriateness level for your product things have to make sense so everything as they say everything in your image communicates something and you have mm -hmm. to keep in mind what does this communicate you know even if it's a small item what does this communicate what am i telling people about this image what am I telling people about my brand? What am I telling people about the experience they will have when they use this product, right? Yes. Am I going to feel like a million dollars? Am I going to feel like diamonds? Am I going to, you know, um, uh, look good? And feel You really want to be able to communicate that. And when it comes to beauty, that is ultra, 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 ultra important because people mm -hmm. purchase beauty items to enhance, to look and feel better about them cells all right guys so one last comment here great content sharing link for others to check out the lipstick effect thank you leona we love it when the community shares keep sharing and we appreciate it and okay of course once again thanks so much thanks juma for coming on no and, and, and chatting with us about the um, principles behind designing great product photos and guys thanks so much for logging on this week we will see you again next week for another episode of The Lipstick Effect. Have a great night. Bye.